we're going to cut the individual rates from seven brackets to four. Simplification. No business of any size, from a Fortune 500 company to a mom and pop shop, to a freelancer living from gig to gig, will pay more than 15% of their business income in taxes. Another reason you have to love Donald Trump. There isn't a politician in America at the moment who does a better job of the pre-sale about anything and everything he's going to say. Sunday night on 60 Minutes, he left veteran reporter Scott Pelley almost in need of oxygen to make sense of the verbiage being spouted forth. And the top-running Republican candidate nailed the preview perfectly on taxes and then came out on Monday and made it clear, for the moment, at the very least. In order to decipher exactly what he said, the meat or lack thereof behind it, and if indeed this will save America and put an organic chicken in every pot, we call in the experts. He's the veteran economist, columnist, and professor of business at the University of Maryland, Peter Morisi, joined by the also veteran economist, Wall Street survivor, and author of The American Dream Under Fire, Steve Beeman. All right, gentlemen, we've heard it now. Donald Trump has spoken, and I'm going to get this to you first, Peter. What exactly did he say? Did it make any sense? It made a great deal of sense. It's fewer, fewer rates, lower rates, and cleaning out all the deductions. He basically wants to clean up the tax code. The same thing for the corporate tax. He's going to remove the incentives, or at least a lot of them, to move offshore and bring those companies back. It's all about the things the Democrats view as an anathema. Incentives, free enterprise, encouraging the private sector to create growth. You know, I bet you that Hillary Clinton didn't understand a word he said. And I bet you <laughs> Carly Fiorina said to herself, how do I deal with all this honesty? It was a slam dunk, a great performance. However, we need to see it scored independently. We need to see if it is indeed revenue neutral. Ah, uh, okay. Now, Steve, I'm going to come to you. A lot of people have said exactly what Peter said. Grand, perfect, nailed it. But when you put this all into motion then, and you actually have to get this working, have to get everybody to agree, and have to make this go, do you think that that is feasible? Oh, boy, you're depending on Donald's salesmanship or whoever wins the nomination. The ideas are clearly good. We flatten the tax brackets down. We lower the rates. We lower corporate rates so companies come back to America. We free up $2 trillion in cash to reinvest. We eliminate the inheritance tax. These are all great ideas. Whether Donald can sell it and make it mainstream okay, I don't know. I, I hope that he can and Carly can because they're the two that will carry this mantle. What did you hear, Steve, specifically in everything he said? And we've looked at a bunch of the listing issues here that he said. But what did you hear that made you think, wait a minute, this is going to be the hang-up. This is going to be the two or three things that will be extremely difficult to do. I think he's going to have a hugely difficult time getting the corporate tax cuts he's talking about. I think he's going to have a hugely difficult time getting completely rid of the inheritance tax or the death tax, as it's called. There's also a provision in it to tax insur um, insurance interest payments to the wealthy, and I think the insurance lobby will go after that really hard. Hey, Peter, do you think that this is something, though, that, and I'm going to just point something out. When he was reading this on Monday and talking about it, he was reading it. He, he simply he was going down. He was looking at every single line. Do you think that Donald Trump actually, and, and again, I, I don't want to cast aspersions here, but maybe this was just written for him and he is just spouting it off and making sure that it gets out there, or do you think he really understands it, believes it, knows it, and has it in his soul? He understands and knows it and has it in his soul, though it was written for him like any president. He said, this is what I want to accomplish, this is what I want it to look like, and then the economists that he's hired have made it work out so theoretically, in their minds, it's revenue neutral, so it works. Uh, I think he really understands this. This is his wheelhouse. He knows how to make money. He knows how to make an honest dollar. He is, you know, we've talked about his bankruptcies and all the rest, but the fact is, his net worth is a lot bigger today than it was 20 years ago. Carly Fiorina, his net worth is a lot higher than that, because essentially, Hewlett Packard is paying her alimony to get rid of her. And prior to that, she basically sold investors a, frankly, a cow and called it a horse in, <laughs> in, in the form of Lucent. Uh, neither she nor uh, Hillary Clinton have ever made an honest dollar in the private sector. He has. He understands the tax code. He's had to live inside of it to make his business run. This should be intuitive to him. It was a grand performance. It was, jet, it was authentic. Okay. 
Then 30 seconds to you then still, Peter. What did you hear, and again, same question I asked Steve, that you think will be difficult to push through, if anything? Well, Steve hit the head. You know, I mean, people don't really want an inheritance tax-free America. They don't want people inheriting billions of dollars. The insurance lobby is awfully effective. But if he sells the tax increases, like on the insurance lobby, and the fact that corporations will have to bring their money back every year, from the point of view is, look, we either have to do the whole deal, no more special interests or none. But you know what I would love to see? You know, Mrs. Clinton is talking about more free stuff, drugs and uh, hospital visits and doctor's visits and so forth. What he needs to do is read off her contributors from places like that when she counters with her list of free stuff. He can say, look, I've had to live inside this. I know what this is going to mean for me. His taxes are going to go up, by the way, because he's a rich guy and he's been taking advantage of all this stuff. He can say that and they say, but how do you explain the fact that you took this much money from the president of Pfizer to finance your campaign and now you want to give out free prescription drugs? You know, it's about time someone called the Clintons for what they are. Bought and paid for politicians, corrupt as all hell with that foundation and so forth. I think this is great. I'm glad we got you on a Monday, Peter, because that's <laughs> perfect. Said right there. Steve, 15 seconds. Do you think that Hillary Clinton, Carly Fiorina, and the others are sitting here today going, I wish I'd have thought about this first and gotten it out there? I do think there's a chance he could be changing the dialogue again, and that's important. He brought up the illegal immigration issue. Maybe he's changing the dialogue here. I'm going to give the man credit because I have been one of those who have been hammering away for a long time saying, give us some substance, give us something you're going to do. Guess what? Donald Trump just did it, and I think like you're both talking about here, he may have just changed the dynamic. Peter Marisi, Steve Beeman, always a pleasure, gentlemen. Thanks so much for joining us. The Holy Father's gone home. Some still unfinished business. We'll talk about it next.